Hey, I'm Ryan from The Burnout Show, and today I'm going to show you how to measure your oil clearances from your crankshaft main bearing caps using plastic gauge. Now, plastic gauge is a really simple tool to use, but it's also not super precise. So if you're going to be building a performance engine or anything that's going to make a lot of power, then you really want to use precise measurement tools. But I'm doing a stock rebuild on my engine, so I'm just going to use some plastic gauge to measure my oil clearances to make sure they're all within spec. So a quick overview of what plastic gauge actually is and how you use it. Basically, it's a really long, thin piece of wax string that you'll cut off a small strip of and place in between your crankshaft and the bearing on the inside of your main bearing cap. Next, what you'll do is you'll torque down your main bearing caps to the proper specifications. And basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna crush that thin piece of wax strip down to a certain amount. Now on the actual package of the plastic gauge, it gives you a couple measurement marks. Basically you would hold this up to the crushed plastic gauge on the inside and use it as a measuring tape. Now there's also different types of plastic gauge that have different ranges of measurements. So you'll wanna look up a range of what your oil clearances should be about and then get the proper plastic gauge for that range. Green is the most common and that's what I've got here today. Uh, it is a range of 0 0.001 inches to 0 0.003 inches. But with all that out of the way, let's actually show you how to use it. All right, so the first step in this process is going to be actually installing your bearings in your main bearing caps. Now, if you've already done this or you're checking the oil clearances on an engine that's already put together and you didn't swap out the bearings, that's fine. Uh, you can skip a little bit ahead. But basically, how you do this, it's really simple. Basically, there's a little groove inside the main bearing cap and a small metal tab sticking out on the bearing itself. And what you wanna do is line those up and then just push the bearing inside so that it lines up properly. You want it to be flush on both sides of the main bearing cap and make sure that tab is lined. And there you go, simple as that. Now with the block, it's slightly more complicated. So you'll see right here, that there's actually a hole inside of the bearing. You'll also notice that there's a hole inside of the slot where the bearing goes on the block. Now these are oil journals. So oil will come through this hole and fill the grooves in the space in between your bearings and your crankshaft. So when you're installing the bearing on the block, it's almost exactly the same, but you gotta make sure that the hole on the bearing lines up with the hole on the block when you're done. Still super simple. It's the exact same process. Line up the tabs and push the bearing in. Make sure everything is flush and it's seated properly and make sure the hole is lined up and you're done. Now you just wanna repeat that process for all of your bearing caps and then we can move on to actually putting the crankshaft in temporarily. Now an important thing to note about the main bearing caps themselves, they do have a specific order that they're supposed to go in. Now, the front one is usually a little different, so that one's easy. The back one is always different, so that one's really easy, but these middle three is where it becomes a bit of a problem. Now, the way you know where these are supposed to go is that it'll usually have a number stamped on the right side of the cap and an arrow pointing which direction is forward on the left side of the cap. So this one has an arrow pointing this way and it says two on the right, which means I know it goes in the second spot facing that direction. Now the same is true for these as well. Sometimes the numbers fade away, like on my third one, doesn't really have a number, but I have two and I have four. And as long as when you take them out, you mark them or keep them in the same order, you're good to go. But yeah, you, they do actually have a specific order and you wanna make sure that you get them in the right order when you put them back in. All right, now that we've got all the bearings installed on the cap so we can go ahead and put the crankshaft in its place. Now, a thing to note is that this is a temporary installation. This is not the final installation. And in fact, you do not want to do the final installation. Normally, what you'll do is you'll put some uh, assembly lube on the bearings themselves when you're putting the crankshaft in for the final installation. You don't want to do that because that will mess with the clearance measurements. Uh, so don't do that. This is a temporary placement. Just put it in dry. So putting in the crankshaft is usually pretty easy, but they can be heavy. So depending on your crankshaft and who you are, you might want to get somebody else to help you. But basically, you just want to pick it up and lower it into the bearing grooves. And now that's all set. Now, I only like to measure the clearance of one of the caps at a time. I think it gives it a more accurate measurement. 
uh, for this unprecise system. But yeah, I just like to do one at a time and then work my way through it. So the next step is gonna be installing all of the main bearing caps once again, but I'm gonna leave one off so that I can put the plastic gauge in there. As you're going to put these in place, you might notice that they're not quite fitting right in their sockets. That is normal. They are going to be a really tight fit, uh, so you're gonna to wanna to take a rubber mallet and kind of whack them in place. Now some of them might actually fit right in, but a lot of generally you're gonna to have to uh, give them a good whack with the mallet and make them seat themselves properly. Now most engines will have a different torque specification for its main bearing caps. For this, which I don't think I've said it yet, is a Chevy 350. The torque specifications are 70 foot pounds for the inner bolts and then 65 foot pounds for the outer bolts. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, just to make it easier for myself, I do them all the 70 because <laughs> five foot pounds isn't really gonna make that much of a difference. Uh, <laughs> but typically you'd wanna do the actual torque specifications. So first make sure that you just finger tight them all the way down and then you can grab your torque wrench and lock them in place. Again, as a little reminder, I've left this cap off because this is the one that I'm gonna check with the plastic gauge. Now you do wanna make sure that you actually torque down all of the bearing caps, not just the one that you're measuring, because that will affect how it actually crushes the plastic gauge in this bearing cap, or rather in any of them, whichever one you are measuring. So I've got my torque wrench here, and I've just set it to 70 foot pounds. And now I will start torquing down all of these bolts. All right, so here's where the plastic gauge actually comes into play. So you wanna grab a pair of scissors or something to cut it. You don't wanna cut off a huge strip. You wanna make sure that it's less than the width of your bearing, but a good size. You wanna make sure that there's enough to definitely read. And you just wanna open up a piece of paper, get that little strip out. Now I know you can't see it from over there, but uh, it is a really tiny little piece and you just wanna put it down. I don't like to put it directly in the center of the cap because I like to measure, um, like what I'll do is I'll measure once and then I'll rotate and I'll measure on the same bearing two to three times and it's just easier to offset it because sometimes the wax won't come off when you're done, uh, but we'll get to that. <laughs> That's what the plastic gauge looks like. A thin little strip. So now you want to take your final bearing cap, put it on there very carefully. You want to be careful to not like slide it around and now at this point you don't want to spin the crankshaft at all. You want to leave everything where it is and then start tightening down the bolts. So basically as I'm torquing these bolts down the main bearing cap is putting pressure on the piece of plastic gauge inside it's crushing it down to a specific width that will allow you to measure how much clearance you have in between the bearing and the crankshaft. All right, and so now that we've got that torqued down, basically you just wanna undo it. <laughs> we'll immediately grab our breaker bar and loosen these bolts. So like I said before, these caps usually will have a really tight fit, so they can be tough going in and they'll also be tough going out. You'll want to take that rubber mallet and give it a couple good whacks back and forth to get it loosened up and then eventually you'll be able to wiggle it out and pull it up. This one just happens to be pretty easy. So on the inside of this bearing you can see that the wax has been crushed down and now it's a little thicker. It's a little wider. This is where you want to take a piece of your plastic gauge measuring tape basically and you can measure it either on the main bearing cap or on the crankshaft itself. It usually leaves a mark on both. Uh, and then you just want to hold it up and figure out which one is the closest width. So for this one, it's going to be just about three thousandths of an inch, which is consistent with the rest of my measurements. I've already done all of them before and they were all three thousandths of an inch. All right, so that's basically it. Like I said before, I like to repeat this process two to three times for every cap just to make sure that the clearance is consistent all the way around and, and basically that everything is 
perfectly round. But basically to clean it up, you just want to take a clean rag. If it's warm outside, it should wipe off pretty easy. Sometimes it gets stuck. And if it gets stuck, that's okay. Plastic gauge is designed to be able to stay in the bearing itself and it'll just wash away with the oil and the heat. Uh, but if you're so determined, you can give it a good scrub, use your fingernails to kind of scrape it off. Uh, but like I said, it's really okay to just leave it in there. And yeah, so that's basically all there is to it. Um, basically what you want to do next is, I, I already said that you should look up your uh, specifications on what or what range of clearances are allowed for your engine. Uh, for me, the production for this cap was between 0.0013 and 0.0025, but the service specs are between, or are up to 0.0035 max. And, and this measurement was 0.003, so that's within spec. Even if it's not, as long as it's close, it's fine. Um, and generally, a little bit more space is better than not enough space. However, there are circumstances where people will purposefully do a smaller clearance to make more horsepower, but that's getting into some crazy and ridiculous stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's basically, you just wanna make sure that all of your measurements are within the specs um, that are allowed for your engine. And yeah, like I said, that's just about it. Uh, if you have any questions about this or anything else, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Also, if you're looking for help specifically on how to uh, do a final installation of the crankshaft in the engine, I'm gonna be coming out with a video about that really soon. And just generally, uh, I'm doing a lot of videos on rebuilding the Chevy 350 in front of me. Uh, so if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe, hit like on the video, and that's gonna be it. So, thank you for watching, and I hope this helped.